Welcome to the Nicholas 11 X12 technology. Today we're looking at the ASRock 970 Pro 3 motherboard. This is an AM3 Plus board that features the AMD 970 chipset. Once again we're looking at the ASRock 970 Pro 3 motherboard. Down here it says it's compatible with Windows 7 of course. It supports AMD Crossfire X. Then there's the Vision FX feature when combining an AMD graphics card with an AMD FX processor. And yeah, like I said before, it's the AMD 970 chipset. This is not the flagship chipset model 990FX, keep that in mind. On the back of the box there are lots of details on the features of this board. Here you can even see a picture of the product itself. All in all, it offers a decent amount of features for the price. Now when we open the box, this is what you get. Here's a standard I.O. shield, not color coordinated at all. It's made cheap obviously, but it's okay for the board at this price point. Then here are two SATA 6 gigabit per second cables. That's very nice, but unfortunately that's all you get for SATA cables. I'd like to see more next time, because with just two cables, well, you will probably need to buy extra cables then. This here is a description how the XFast 555 feature works like, very useful. That's the ASRock 970 Pro 3 software setup guide. Then there's another manual, which is the quick installation guide and it's really, really thick. Oh and of course you also get the drivers for this motherboard, but I'd recommend downloading the latest ones from the ASRock website. And lastly the motherboard in an anti-static bag. Now I'll take it out of the bag and there we go. It feels fairly good and that's a great sign. The first impression on the layout seems to be good too, and this board is kinda hard and that's great, so it will not get bent that easy. Alright, but now I'll show you the entire motherboard from different angles. Right off the bat, I can tell you, it looks absolutely outstanding for the price. It doesn't look that great in general, but always keep in mind that this is a board for a fairly low price compared to other ones. The overall layout and color scheme seems to be pretty good too, and it's really attractive. ASRock definitely did a great job here, because many people with a limited budget love a color scheme like that, and if the performance and features are good too, this board would be perfect. If you think it's a black PCB, then you're wrong. It's a dark brown PCB even if you don't really see that on the pictures, but it is obviously. This motherboard uses the AM3 Plus socket, which supports AM3 Plus and previous generation AM3 processors. It should be able to handle the 8 core CPUs from AMD, so that's amazing for this price, but of course I would not recommend using such a CPU with a 970 chipset, because the CPUs will not perform to their maximum and therefore you get less performance, but quad cores, maybe even 6 cores should do fine. As for the memory, you get 4 DDR3 DIMMs that support the dual channel technology. The maximum amount of memory you can install on this board are 32GB. Supported frequencies go all the way up from 800 to 2100 at OC, which is fairly high. Now to the SATA ports. Right away, as you can see, these are just standard SATA connections. Not like you would see them on more expensive ports, you know, these right angled ones on the right side. Instead, these ports are positioned very simply. Down here are two SATA ports and the position isn't bad at all, but that's also depending on how large your case is. Let's say you don't want to mix your DVD drive with your hard drives for example. And up there are four more SATA ports, so all together you get a total of six SATA 6 gigabit per second ports that run off the AMD SB950 Southbridge. Now to the expansion slots. Here are two PCI Express 2.0 x16 slots. If you'd like to crossfire two graphics cards from AMD, not Nvidia as SLI is not supported, then both slots will run at x8. When using a single GPU configuration, use the first slot and you will be running at x16. Up here you also get one PCI Express x1 slot for sound cards or other expansions, but as you may know, some cards are larger and need that extra space that a heatsink here is using. So it seems like ASRock didn't think of this, because the cards could interfere with that heatsink, although you could also just use an x16 slot, but not when you're running in cross Fire. Not to forget you also get two standard PCI slots. Now to the headers. Here's the power LED header. Here's the front panel header. And before I forget, here's the speaker header. Then here's the CIR and USB 2.0 header. Of course you get two more USB 2.0 headers so that's very nice. And this here is a COM header or also known as serial port. That's the HDMI slash SPDIF header and the front panel HD audio header. Alright, now I'll show you the fan headers and their locations. Up here are the CPU fan 1 and CPU fan 2 headers. Right there is the power fan 1 header. Down there the chassis fan 2 header. And lastly the chassis fan 1 header right there. The 24 pin power connection is right here in its ideal location as well as the 8 pin ATX 12 volt power connection up there. 
This board has a 4 plus 1 face power design to power up the CPU and as you can see good quality components are used so the lifespan should be fairly long too. And to keep everything cool there are two heatsinks on this board, one on the north bridge and one on the south bridge, but unfortunately Astrock didn't decide to put the heatsink on the VRMs, so this will definitely limit overclocking but I don't think you should expect good overclocking results on a motherboard in this price range anyways. This board uses the Realtek ALC892 HD audio codec, which sounds very nice, especially the playback. Now to the back panel. Alright, here's a PS2 mouse port, a PS2 keyboard port, two USB 2.0 ports, two more USB 2.0 ports, one gigabit LAN port, and two more USB 2.0 ports. Then you also get two USB 3.0 ports and 7.1 audio that is powered by the Realtek ALC892 audio codec. Good, now it's time to power on this motherboard. This is the post screen which looks very nice with that high resolution image. Here it is, the BIOS. Obviously it's an UEFI BIOS, so Astrak used the latest technology for their BIOS, and that's very nice. In an UEFI BIOS you can either navigate with your keyboard like you are used to, or just use the mouse. The graphical user interface seems to be pretty good too, but navigating with a mouse is a little hard. There's some sort of lag and the response isn't the greatest, but for the price it's good enough. The UEFI BIOS should be a lot easier to use for beginners and you'll get many options in here which is always a good sign. Now I'll just discard the changes and exit. The ASRock 970 Pro 3 motherboard is a great choice if you're on a tight budget and still want good features and a good looking motherboard. Of course it's the AMD 970 chipset and it's lower than the 990FX chipset. So this motherboard is not the best choice for 8 core processors because the hyper transport will only allow up to 4.8 GT per second. But for quad cores, maybe even 6 cores, no problem, it should be fine. But the thing with the hyper transport limit is a thing on the AMD 970 chipset. This one is limiting the performance. But overall, this Astrock motherboard offers great features and performance for the price. Pros are great price performance ratio, good layout, then it has a good amount of features, it also has an UEFI bias a good color scheme and also supports memory up to 2100 MHz. I have only one thing to say for the cons. Navigating with the mouse in the UEFI BIOS can be difficult, but other than that I give this motherboard a 9 out of 10 and definitely recommend it. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.